Whilst my grinding rests have been very well received, in part due to there being no commercial equivalent, my quick change tool holders are almost always bypassed in favour of those having a more traditional design. Because of this, I am starting this video with an explanation of how I arrived at the design and what I see as its advantages. First though, I must clarify my comments when I say larger than or smaller than. I am only talking in terms of 0.05mm maximum. We start then with the channel being larger than the locating pin, with the drawing showing that it will only locate on the peak of the pin. The clearance on either side will obviously make it impossible for the tool holder to find a consistent position. If we now consider a situation where the channel is smaller than the locating pin, we see it mates on the corner, which would appear to achieve a more consistent result. The next drawing though shows that it will be dependent on variations in the securing force. To overcome these weaknesses, you will see here that I have added a flap to the locating pin and ensured that the channel was larger than it. Another beneficial aspect of the design is that the length to width ratio of the mating surfaces is much greater than on the commercial quick change tool holders, being 2.5 to 1. Let's now put the tool holder to the test. Having now shown the tool holder being used in the side position, we now move to the rear position, where most times it will be for boring or screw cutting. It can be seen that now the locating key is further away from the cutter, and more so in most cases due to the boring bar's length, therefore placing more load on the key and tool holder mating surfaces, though of course, boring bars are rarely called upon to take heavy cuts. Rather than testing it with a boring bar, which would be obscured, and in any case normally take light cuts, 
I am testing it with a specially ground knife tool, projecting 40 mm from the end of the holder and machining the outer diameter of a workpiece. The test scene being on a piece of free cutting mild steel 38mm diameter with the machine running at 300 rpm. The width of the cut was 3mm and I hand fed the cutter at an estimated 0.05mm per rail. After this I did a test off camera, still at the same settings but using power feed. Gradually increasing the feed rate from 0.05 mm to 0.15 mm, which the tool holder coped with perfectly. Beyond that though, the lathe seized due to one belt slipping on the smallest pulley. As the holder had not moved on the locating key during these tests, I considered that the tool holder would cope with any load placed on it in normal situations. Having shown it fitted with a knife tool and machining a piece of steel, I am now testing it to see how accurately it will return to the same place each time. This first test is for vertical accuracy and is being carried out at a distance of 50 mm from the tool holder. Each division on the indicator is 0.01 mm, that is 0.0004 inches. The results, as I'm sure you will have seen, were much less than 0.01 mm. Let us now test the horizontal position.
Not quite as good, but still better than 0.01 mm. One important aspect of the design for the home workshop is that there is very much less milling to be carried out. The groove for the cutting tool in the tool holder being the only major one. This means that it would not be an impossible task for the lathe only workshop owner. You can see from the following slides how the half round grooves in the holders were made. Much simpler than machining large amounts of metal away to produce the dovetails. Having mentioned dovetails, I consider my locating services also to be dovetails, but inverted and being very slightly curved. 